Oh, good. Michigan six. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I just had my lunch. We're good to go. November 13th. We are three days away from this season opener on our second season here, September or November 2023. Just a quick recruiting update. We have Dennis Dennis, 6'9 center. Um, still waiting to make a decision. Nobody else is interested. We're the only ones that have come knocking. So it's only a matter of time. He's not going to go anywhere else. This is after he dissed us during the recruiting during the recruiting phase. He wouldn't talk to us. He told us to. He didn't say lose my number, but he said, uh, "Don't call me no more." But then, guess what? Nobody came. Nobody called. Nobody called. So now it's us. We're number one on his list because pretty much nobody. Nobody's after him. So I think we're going to get him. Look at these numbers. I mean, he's 29th overall in the country. I don't know why nobody's coming for him. I really don't. He's got the great name. That's what attracted me to me. That's what attracted me to him in the first place was that name. Dennis Dennis or Denny Denis if he's French. I don't know. So here we are. We got three days until our season opener against St. Peter's. And St. Peter's just won their first game. I saw the record change to 1-0. and Then we're at George Mason. Have yet to play. And then Jackson State at home when they are 1-0. So Jackson State, that's where uh, Coach Prime coached the football team before moving to Colorado. It's in Jackson, Mississippi. It's an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. Same with Grambling on the screen right now. And then you have the uh, HWCOs, CUs, which is the historically white, you know, BYU, Vandy, whatever. All the schools in the Ivy League. Here we go. St. Peter's Peacocks. Stick those Peacocks. Let's get them. First game of the year, so I'm going to look at the the line just to see you kind of where we're at. So we're favored by 18, 18 point favorites. Oh, did I see something here? Oh no, sorry, I thought that was a. So the Peacocks won their opening game 70 to 63. I don't know who they played, but um, now they're playing Michigan. Here we go. First game of the year. Let's start off with a bang. 74 65. Victory. Xavier Favors was our leading scorer with 14 points. Did I do my depth chart? I didn't. I didn't even do the depth chart. Uh, how was Xavier Favors our leading scorer? I only got him slated for six minutes or 12 minutes. Okay, I'm going to uh, actually, I'm going to do this manually. Ricky Lee at point guard. How much do I want to play green? I kind of want to split this up evenly. This is something I obviously I should have done before game one, but I didn't. I'm going to have um, green play the middle six minutes in each quarter. It has Anderson here playing a little bit of the point. Let me see. No. If anything, Barrett and Nielsen, Barrett, Nielsen, and Ricky Lee, I'd like to kind of play Barrett and Ricky Lee on the point and then have Nielsen the majority of the minutes at shooting guard. Can I clear everything? Yeah, clear it. Okay, so, so we'll have Ricky Lee start. Then we're going to have Barrett come in. No, I can't do that yet. Hold on. I'm going to go minute by minute. So Nielsen is only going to play uh, shooting guard. He's going to play 28 minutes. So 14 per half. I'm going to start him out with three. He's going to do the middle three. That's already 12. And then I'll give him the last four minutes off. 
And then we'll start off with a bang four, and then the final three. Yeah, this should be actually over here. I'm gonna start them off with three, end them off with four, and then we'll have Anderson play here. And then we'll have Anderson play here as well. So that's our shooting guard. So I'm going to give 16 minutes to Anderson at point guard, but I'm going to start off. Um, this is going to be tough because I got to get them all playing two at a time. This looks like a big chunk of time consecutively, but there is a halftime there. Now, this is where things kind of get a little wonky. I'm going to switch this up, have him play here, and then I'll put him here. Uh, let me go back to the raw. This is going to be tough. Because I want Nielsen, I want all three of these to play these guys to play twenty eight minutes. Nielsen is only going to play shooting guard, so he needs twenty eight minutes at shooting guard. I've only got him four minutes in the first half, so let's fix that. <coughs> Oops. Okay, so there's twenty eight minutes for him. Now I've got. Anderson filling in when he's not playing but now I got Anderson also filling in at point guard so how's this going to work so this doesn't work here I need him at point guard for these th three blocks which means Nielsen's going to have to come in for these three blocks and then he's going to need a break in here so I'm going to take this away and this away no, sorry, this. So 28, 28, 24. And we've got it all covered. Yeah. I can even take maybe... This is a lot here. I'm going to take some minutes away from him there. He's the 26. I wonder if I can move this forward a bit. That's okay. He's playing a lot in the second half. Seven. He's playing 14 minutes in the second half, 12 in the first half. I'd like a little more of a break here. Maybe. Hmm. How's that going to work, though? Oh, we'll just do that. We'll do. Oh, no, I can't. Hmm. Huh. Maybe we'll stick it like that. We'll keep it like that. We got our guards down. Now for shooting guard or small forward, I've got uh, Walker and Strong. So that's a little more straightforward. Straightforward at small forward. They're both going to rotate. I can even go to, I like, to give them some time. Six minute blocks. Strong's gonna come in here, and then we're gonna go back to Walker. And then Strong's gonna end the first half and begin the second half before we go back to Walker. And then Strong. Uh, we're gonna go four here and four here. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That works. <clears throat> Power forward, I think, is the same. I think we've got uh, two strong. We got Haywood and Shannon. Favors is not going to play that much. He's a senior, but he's not very good. So power forward, we got Haywood starting. We're going to switch it up a little bit from our small forward rotation. We're going to go four, four, four. 
and then he's going to finish up and then do four at the beginning of the second half before we go down to I'm on the wrong guy here yeah you know what I did here okay I got to move this down I've been my eyes are not lined up I was one off with all of these there we go so I got his four here and then he's going to go four here. Now we got two and two. So maybe what we'll do is we'll. Uh, yeah, keep them all fresh. Oh, I got too many minutes for Haywood. There. 20 and 20. That should keep them both happy ish and at center we have the same deal but not as talented we have two players at center we have randall and Corey brown uh randall being the sophomore if anyone's going to go get more minutes i would like it to be him but for now we're just going to even them up so randall's going to start out and then he's going to do two i'll bring brown in for four and then we'll go 4-4 four, four after that. Brown's going to start the second half with two. And just do the opposite in the second half. All right. And now we have the garbage time minutes. Our extra players are all kind of the same. So our garbage time point guard will be green. Our shooting guard will be card small forward will be price power forward will be white and our center uh we're gonna go with uh randall because i want him to get more minutes even if they're garbage time minutes so that's a nice matrix what is here overtime we forgot about the overtime well uh, we'll just put our starters in there right Nielsen's not a starter at a shooting guard, but he really, in effect, is because he's going to be playing the most minutes at shooting guard. All right. That's a complete matrix. Let's save. That's a lot of work to lose in a crash. All right. There, here's something. When I was playing this game not recording, I would never do that. AI did a lot of my work because I wanted to get through seasons. But now look at me. I'm doing the whole matrix by myself. Look at me, huh? Look at me. In the Big Ten, Wisconsin's up 2-0. Oh. I just came here just to look at the rankings, really. There's four, five ranked teams, and we are not one of them. So the, the highest ranked team in the conference is Michigan State, 6 then we have Illinois at 11, and then 19, 20, and 22. So, but that's not saying much. Last year, Illinois was not ranked for a majority of the season, and they wound up in the top 10. Now, the number one team, consensus number, consensus number one is Kentucky, followed by Connecticut, and then we have some, some differ, dif, differentiation. But uh, it's the usual suspects up there. San Diego State has become somewhat of a power. There's not any surprises in the top five. These are all uh, big schools. Maybe Kansas State. But, yeah. The net rankings haven't been updated. They're still in alphabetical order. Well, this is a big season for us. So, I want to win championships. Usually in these games, I'm pretty good just because, you know, I have the time and the mentality. Like when I sink my teeth into something, I, I, I have a laser focus, one track mine, and I get good. I'll do whatever it takes to get good, and I have the time to do it. Um, and that's part of the reason why I use the smaller schools. I mean, with a team like Michigan, I would have thought that it would have been easier than this. If I knew it was going to be this difficult, I would have used them earlier because I do like it when it's not easy. 
So before we talk Final Fours and championships, we have to focus on our conference and get better. We got to be the best team in our conference before we can be the best team in the country. And right now we were eighth last year. Uh, so we got to get better. Here we are with George Mason. This is our only non-conference away game, not including the tournament that we are scheduled to play in. Oh, I unclicked it, and I lost 80, 93 to 82 at George Mason. Kind of mirroring what happened last year. We were 1-1 one one with an away loss. Hopefully, the rest of the season isn't mirrored by what happened last year because... Even though we had a winning record, I was not happy with last year's performance. I thought we were going to do a lot better than that. I'm going to go to the strategy page and see how our training is going. So with flex and high post, we're kind of in the mid. Better than last year's start. Same with the five out. And on defense, yeah, we're a little better. Our man-to-man -man is very good. Our 2-3 zone needs a lot of work, and our trap is still... We're still working on it from last year. So that shows just how long it takes to instill the system into these players if they come in not knowing the system. So we've got some LOI signed, Hickerson and Fitz. We still have some visits here, but I think that's just residue from before. Oh, no, those are the centers I have. In case Dennis Dennis turns us down. And as of right now, he still only has one offer, and that's from us. He has little interest in coming to our school. He was indifferent with the home visit. But he did enjoy his campus visit, and he doesn't have anybody else. So unless you want to go to the G League or play in Europe, you got to take our offer. Maybe if we have a hot start, maybe that's what he's waiting for. He's, he's waiting to see how we do, which puts even more importance on these games that we have upcoming. The next game is Jackson State at home. Uh, the rest of our non-conference schedule is at home against teams that we should beat. I'd like to run the table. Will we? I don't know. I'm not in the prediction game anymore because every time I predict uh, success, we have failure. So it's almost as if I'm jinxing myself. I don't know. Vandy, the HWCU. I don't know if that's an actual term. I made that up. So here we are, Jackson State, 2-1, and one, comes to Michigan, 1-1. One and one. Oh, I unclicked it again. 78-59. to 59. Those are the type of wins we should be putting on these lower, not lower, but uh, lower prestige schools, we'll say. Hey, Arkansas, 156 over Arizona. That's a pounding right there. I like Arkansas. There's... You know, I support Michigan, but there's teams that I, I like. I like to see them do well. Arkansas, I have a soft spot for because back in the day with Nolan Richardson, I really enjoyed watching that team. Todd Day, Lee, Bear, Lee Mayberry in the backcourt. Um, and then a few years later, they had uh, Corliss Williamson, who went on to the NBA. That was a team that I enjoyed watching. They played, uh, they came at you for 40 minutes. That's the style I'm emulating with this Michigan. Just 40 minutes of just coming at you. That's why I rotate the players so much, because the style of play will tire you out. And I'm hoping that if teams come in here trying to play a short bench, then um, we're going to wear you out. We're going to run you. So Arkansas is one of those teams that I do have a soft spot for. Murray State, I really, uh, I followed them for about 30 years. They're, they've been my, my second team, if you're allowed to have a second team. Um, it's kind of even not even a second team because they're really not in the league of the, the big conferences. So I don't remember Michigan and Murray State ever even meeting. So they might as well be playing different sports. So, yeah, Michigan is my team. Murray State is definitely my second team or 1A, 1B, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, I do. Oh, my God, I clicked it again. I do uh, very much like Murray State. 
So we have Texas Southern coming to town. I think that's a historically black college as well. Don't quote me on that, but how are these ranked teams doing? Michigan State's doing all right. Illinois, they had a big win there. And uh, that's all I can see. Oh, Maryland lost against SMU. So, okay, maybe that opens the door for us to get a ranking, huh? Texas Southern. Oh, now I can unclick it. Got to go through this again. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. Okay, unclick, play sim. Not as big a win as I would expect, but a win is a win is a win. I think I'm going to. Um, I think I'm going to benefit from the three guard rotation as opposed to what I would normally run a four guard rotation because these three guards are talented and they're going to get more minutes. They're going to score more. They're going to be happier. They're not going to transfer away. Don't forget. I forget the guy's name, but somebody transferred. <laughs> and also don't forget Indiana. That guy that told me to lose his phone number he's now on the team and he's playing and we need to show him that you don't do that you don't do that our next game our next three games i'll go they're all home games we have north dakota state oh and three they're coming in in a couple days and then we have a week off before princeton comes to town they're three and three at the moment and then another week off we have uab coming in the University of Alabama at Birmingham, the Blazers. What is this email? Princeton scouting report. Okay, so we're going to just, um, what's the date? Okay, we have one more day until our, uh, our North Dakota game. And then we have a week, a week of simming to go to Princeton. So, hey, there was a, I just saw Vince Carter. Vince Carter is in the game. Nice. You know, I am from Toronto. Um, I, re I remember Vince very well. It's funny. He's, he's a hero here. And when he they showed him on the screen at the game he was at, there was a big cheer and everyone loved him. He was hated when he left. He was public enemy number one. I don't know when the switch happened, but uh, he was not popular. He quit on the team. 89-71. That's a nice win. That's a nice win. It's against North Dakota State, but that's the kind of win I want. I'd like 100 points. So, uh, Yeah, Vince quit on the team. Or maybe I'll save this story for... Oh, no, we have a week off now. So it's going to be a week of simming. So I got time to tell this story. If I was into editing anymore at all, we would I would just do that and we'd be at the next game. But editing is what kills lazy youtube channels and this is a lazy youtube channel so if i were to get into the editing and cut out all the fat i'd probably this would probably be the last video if it even came out at all because it's a lot of work so now i'm just gonna i'm gonna sim you can watch i'll talk i won't talk whatever you can watch the game you can see what i'm doing here you can follow along and i do appreciate that I'm seeing a lot of hundreds there. Anyway, so yeah, Vince, uh, I remember one time he came out and he said he's not going to dunk anymore. He refused to dunk. Um, like, I don't know how you go from averaging, you know, at the end, 16, 17 points a game for us. And then he gets traded to New Jersey. All of a sudden he's back, you know, 28 points a game. He's dunking. Like he quit. He quit on the Raptors. So yeah, he's a big hero now because... You know, a lot, I guess a lot of people weren't around back then. You know, the TikTok generation who thinks Michael Jordan is the greatest ever by it's not even close. They've only seen him in highlights. Of course, you don't miss shots in highlights. You don't lose games. I'm not saying that Michael Jordan isn't the greatest ever. But I'm just saying it's not head and shoulders, like no debate. They've got him up as a god here, but 
I watched Michael Jordan from the beginning. You know, when he came into the NBA, I was 11. That's just when I started watching. So I watched his whole career, and I've watched LeBron's whole career. Like, Michael Jordan was known as just a scorer. Like, he would get, you know, 30, high 30s per game, and the Bulls would lose. That's, you know, he wasn't considered in the higher. He was just a shooter. And then when Magic and Bird and all of them started to fade, then Jordan continued being known as just a shooter because the Pistons came. That's when the bad boys started dominating. And when they broke apart, then there was a little opening, and then Jordan got Pippen, and then they started to have success, and then Rodman came. Three Hall of Famers on that team. They didn't beat anybody with more than one Hall of Famer. I'm getting a little too... This is a touchy subject. Love Jordan. And uh, I do think he might be the greatest player of all time. I just don't think it's... uh, I don't think it's... uh, It's out of the conversation to to say maybe LeBron or... uh, and, you know, I've never seen Bill Russell play, but, I mean, to win 10 championships in 13 years and 11 conference championships, I mean, for all the, the youngins that are saying Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time, what's the difference of me saying Bill Russell? I've never watched him play either. From the highlights, he looks amazing. And here's another thing. Uh, I'm not going to get involved in the LeBron versus Michael argument, but I will say something. I just glossed over the loss to Princeton. I know. As some of you were saying, hey, I saw it. I just didn't want to talk about it. Very disappointing. Um, they used the finals record, 6-0, and versus LeBron, who's 4-6 and in the final. Okay. It's not boxing. I mean, those that's 6-0. and the, the O in the 6-0 and is not undefeated. That just means you lost earlier. So the six finals losses for LeBron, would that be better if he lost earlier or missed the playoffs? Don't forget, Michael Jordan missed the playoffs. He got swept a bunch of times in the first round. He never beat Larry Bird in the playoffs. Not a series. He never beat him in a game in the playoffs. I think he was 0-6. But if he had beaten Larry Bird... And then won the next round and the next round and then lost in the final. Would that be better or worse? It's better, right? You won three extra playoff series. But, oh, no, now he's 6-1 and one in the final. Oh, no, it's not as good. Of course it's as good. Of course. Okay, back to the game. I had two weeks of simming with one game. That's why I kind of went off on a little tangent there. I might cut that out because that's going <laughs> to that's gonna upset a lot of people. Talking smack about Michael Jordan. How did I get on that? Oh, the Vince Carter thing. Vince Carter, yeah. That I know. I can talk about that. I was there through it all. I was a, I was a McGrady. Did you know that McGrady and Vince Carter are cousins? Either first or second cousins. Anyway, when they were on the team, they made a big deal about that. But McGrady never really got a chance to shine in Toronto because of... Uh, the presence of Vince Carter. UAB Birmingham. I'm not if I lost to Princeton, I'm not feeling good about this. That's why. Am I bad at the game? Hold on a second. Am I am I bad at the game? I haven't had any success in this game, but I thought it was just because I was using bad teams. Listen, I, I know this five out and this high pressure is not the best system. But I love it. It's the the best for me. That's what I want to play. I don't want to win 61 to 52. I want to lose 109 to 107. You know? It's fun for me. It's fun. And maybe if my guys stick around, some of them will have the chance to be like maybe the leading scorer all time because we're playing such a high tempo offense. Mm, what now? What now? <laughs> See, it just switches like that. You win a game, you're up here, you lose a game, you're down there. Right away, right away, Ohio comes in. 
Let's get it. Let's get it, boys. Ohio is coming in. And then Jacksonville, the Dolphins, the made-up team. And then we have nine days before the conference begins, conference play. And our first conference game is Ohio State. Starts off with a banger. So 2-6 and six Ohio comes into Michigan, and they whomp us. We are not good this year. This is going to be another bad year. We suck. I suck. I shouldn't be playing this game. Very frustrating. I'm going to go another two, three seasons with this system. And if I don't have any success, I got to switch it. But it's good that this is happening because I'm in that CBGM I was telling you about, and we're kind of like, towards the end of the season and I just picked up the team so I got a fresh recruiting cycle and all that and if this system is really bad I know it's not the greatest but if it's really bad playing like this I need to know that's why I'm going to stick with it through this whole series and because I need to know if this is something I should even be entertaining in the CBGM I don't want to embarrass myself you know there's a hundred teams over 100 teams that are controlled by humans a couple by animals no i'm just kidding but you know I, i'm not gonna win the whole thing but i'm not i don't want to embarrass myself you know i take pride in my my sim game aptitude so i need to figure this game out quick the clock is ticking so let's get down to brass tacks should I be playing? I have two teams. Oregon, I'm definitely not playing this system. I'm going to play the way they have it set up now. They've been successful. I'm going to kind of tweak it. But with Loyola Marymount, this is the system that I'm planning. Because this is where it came from, Loyola Marymount. Paul Westhead. That's why I picked the team. Here's Jacksonville. Okay, we won that. I was so nervous. Oh, I was so nervous. Uh, 85, 75. So we are scoring a lot. It's just we're giving up so many points and we're losing games that we shouldn't be losing. Okay, I'm going to save now because we have a nine-day sim. And sim simming is when the crashing happens. In, in this house, simming equals crashing. I actually posted on the, the, the dolphin. Should I turn this camera down a little bit? Boop, 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 boop. Um, I actually posted on the dolphin. <laughs> Some of you guys know why I said dolphin. Andy Dolphin. Does that name ring a bell? I posted on the Draft Day Sports Wolverine forums about this crashing issue. And um, I haven't gone back to see if any of you responded. But uh, other people in the past had posted about it. And they had mentioned something about the OneDrive updating while you're playing will cause the crash so i've disabled the one drive and then i had crashes uh i've updated the whole system it's completely up to date and i still had crashes and i have crashes on this pc not as much but quite a bit on my other pc my other laptop so i don't know what the problem is but for now i'm just going to keep saving periodically more often but since we've been doing this sim, we're in hour number six. So five and a half hours of playing this game, we haven't had a crash. And that's the longest I've ever gone. So the, the problem could be fixed. We did have that one issue when we had the recruiting table on. There's a pop-up that came on about loading the table or something like that. But it didn't crash the game. So hopefully the, the crash problem is solved. 2.15 is the time. I got to pick up the little guy. I leave here at about uh, 5 after 3. School lets out at 3.30. I got about a 10-minute drive. But I like to get there early, get a good spot. I like to park backwards so I can see them come out, so I don't have to get out of the car. That's Canada. Sometimes you don't want to get out of the car if you don't have to, because it's cold. Even though it's nice out, I still don't like standing out in the wind and everything. I can see him come out. When I see him come out the door... Then I go out and meet them. But to do that, you got to get there early. It's a small parking lot. But the one good thing about the winter is they plow the parking lot and they put all the snow in the 
the front two spots closest to the to the school a big pile of snow and i drive a big giant jeep and i love parking on big piles of snow so when it's, it hasn't snowed in a while even though it's uh, february but when it does they still have a pile there that cars can't get on so i'm good this is the time of year where I can leave a little later because I know that spot is there. I just don't like backing onto that pile when everybody's around in case something goes awry. Like I, you know, but not that I've ever had a problem with that, but um, sometimes I don't get up in one shot. And if people are watching, it's kind of like, oh, I've got to get this, you know? So anyway, we're on it minute number 35 we got 25 minutes left and i got an hour before i gotta leave so there's plenty of time to finish this i wouldn't have started if it wasn't so here's a save we are at the end of december did i miss ohio state did i talk right through the ohio state game i gotta stop yapping i did i did did we lose it We lose it. <gasps> we lost. Oh my god. So it's maybe it's a good thing that <laughs> I talked right through that. 81 to 67 against Ohio State. Come on, where are they? They're 10 and 1. They're actually good this year. Look at this. Wow, yeah, they're really good. They got a good roster. I don't feel so bad. That was an away game. I mean, you always feel bad losing to that team down south, Ohio State. But I mean, they're actually they're actually decent. So yeah. okay, whatever. So now I'm six and five, zero and one in the conference. I can see another year. I had such high hopes, but I could see another year of mediocrity. But that was an away game. So now this is the this is the Big Ten for you. We lost that against Ohio State. They weren't even ranked. We got number eleven Michigan State coming to town. Then we travel away to Maryland, who's they've kind of slipped. They're six and four this year. They're not not ranked, but last year they were in the number four team in the country. Then we have number ten Illinois coming to town. Those are our next three games. So it's conceivable that we could be 0-4 in the conference. Like, we can be out of the running before the end of January with a decent team. Like, we're, we're decent. The team is decent. Me, I don't know. My The system, it doesn't seem to be working. Other teams are getting 100 points, but my whole goal, I wanted to get 100 points. I haven't done it once. I got 97 last year, but... Okay, so we got Michigan State at home. This is a big game for us huge game we need it that's not even close we're not even close to where we need to be what do i do what do i do i can't change the system because this is i need to test to see if this works well strategy unavailable i'm on the wrong team here get those buckeyes off my screen Yeah, we're not very, very proficient in our offense. What if I just completely eliminated the flex? Is that too risky? Well, we got to try something. So we're not going to practice the flex anymore. We're going to do 2020. And then 555, 2515. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm down, but that was the 11th best team in the country. <coughs> I just don't like the score. 64 points. We should be scoring more than that. We're taking about 70 shots a game. We should at least get more than a point a shot. Especially if we're taking a lot of threes. Now we're going to really take a lot of threes. 
we're just doing the high post and the five out. So Maryland, this is the first game that we're testing this new system out. Not a new system, but like focused more on the outside. We lost. We lost 81 to 75. We are now six and seven. <sighs> Maybe that's why I am doing this to show you what not to do. Let me serve as a lesson to you. I am not good at this game. Six for 28 from three. I'm good at the game. They just had a bad shooting night. They need to get better. They need to shoot better. I, it's not me. I, I can't possibly be the problem here. That makes me feel better. Six for 21. If we hit eight for 21, that game is tied. I'm hearing a knocking. I gotta move to the country. Neighbors are too close. All right, I'm just gonna close this window and keep an eye on that. You can't see, but I've got like electrodes and everything. I'll show you. You see this? That's a little uh, monitor, heart monitor. Nothing serious, I hope, but had a, I've had a heart murmur for a while. So I went in and I said, listen, we gotta, we gotta nail this down. We gotta find out what's going on. And if we find something, we gotta, we gotta fix it. Let's go. <sighs> Everybody that comes in here is ranked. Come on, man, give me some powder puffs. Even though I lost those games too, but. So we have Illinois and then we're at Penn State and then we have Indiana. It just, the hits just keep coming. We're 0-3. Remember I told you we can easily be 0-4 while well, this is 0-4 staring us in the face. 11-3. Illinois coming to town. They're number 11 in the country. And they put the boots to us. They put us right on the end of, the, of their boot and shoved us right out of our own building. 96 to 69. What do I do? What do I do? Somebody help me. I obviously have no idea how to play this game. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I think it's pretty clear anyway that uh, I'm not going to run this five out in the CBGM. I, I just, it's not going to happen. What I need to do is is look at some other teams in that league, see what they're running, and then maybe I got to watch more YouTube. I got to do something. Something here is not working. Do I need to get more in-depth and look at the scouting reports? Like we're playing Penn State. Let's look at the report. They play a normal pace, some offensive freedom outside of their sets in the half court. They sport an outside and attack. Outside attack with primary set being the motion. Penn State really rarely seems to press. And when they do, they go man-to-man, -man, full court man-to-man. -man. So how do I use that information? What works well against the motion? Let's check. Defensive set descriptions, man-to-man. -man. Does it show at all what works against what? So this gives up shots at the wing and the high post. What is, where does the motion get their shots from? Let's have a look at that. Basic offensive set requires movements by by players without the ball. Keeps the primary post players around the lane while allowing the guards to, to roam the outside or cut to the basket. So mostly inside. I'm going to go give them a little bit more freedom also. Let's play it. Let's play it out. Penn State. 
No. Ooh, that's great. 84 points. Wonderful. But 91 against, that's just not not cool. I don't know what to do here. We got Indiana coming in. That guy's going to laugh at us. That Kent fellow. He's going to laugh us out of our own building. I'm six and nine. There's no way I keep this job if this isn't if I didn't do sandbox mode. There's no way. Should I call it? Should I end this experiment and go back to some kind of normalcy with the uh, system? No. Do I go all five out? No, I can't because I got some players that only shoot inside. See how that training has affected uh, has affected things. So the five out, we're actually got some. We got some players coming coming good on that. And the high post, same thing. Why don't we just go all high post? Yeah, I'm gonna try that. No. Ninety ten. No. All in. We are really experimenting now. Like, we got to try something. We have to try something. We're still practicing the flat. I didn't save it. That's why. You can't do that, man. Okay, we're going all high post here. So we got 15 minutes left in the stream, so we can get a, a good chunk of games in here. And then I'm going to take some time and really figure things out. So Indiana's coming in. We, somehow we're favored by a, a point and a half. I'm, razz I'm frazzled. I'm razzled dazzled. Oh, ho, ho, ho. suck it, Kent. That's what happens. You're going to take my call now? Woo! Woo! I knew it. I knew it. I'm good. I'm good at this game. Let's look at the box. We ran them off the court in the second half. We didn't shoot well from three or at all. We shot well on three pointers and we kept them to poor shooting as well. Where's Kent? Oh, there he is. Nine minutes, didn't make a shot, no points. Two rebounds, one foul. Kelvin Kent, forget my number. Back to Indiana with you. He plays in Indiana. He's from Ohio. Get out of here. See how fast I can go from dejected to in your face? That's one win. That's all it takes. And that was a good win, 74-57. Indiana is a good team. We are a good team. We're 7-9 and nine now. We really got to make a run because this is going to be a wasted year. We're getting to the point where we're going to have to win the conference tournament to, to have any success this year at all. I don't want to be in the TBC again getting eliminated by LSU in the first round. So maybe I've solved it. Maybe the high post is the way to go. I don't know. I really don't know. But I do have... There's Vince Carter. He plays on Temple. Eight points, eight rebounds, two blocks. I don't think he's a guard. If He's got eight rebounds. But guards do get lots of rebounds sometimes. If a high post works, I mean, we have a lot of guys that can shoot the three. Maybe we don't have, like, the, the Golden State Warriors. But maybe that's why the high post works. You know, we work in some inside shooting. But we take our guys, our big men out to the wings. Let's see how we do with Rutgers. That could have been a one-off. I don't know. Rutgers is better than us this year so far. Oh, I think I got, that's a big win. That's a 22-point win. You know what this is? This is us turning around the season right there. I think I did it. I think I did it. Let's look at the box. 
okay, we shot 55%, 12 of 26 from three. I don't know if that's just getting more open shots because of the system, or maybe we had a bad game before, but not so much now. Uh, Brian Nielsen, five threes in the game. He had 20 points. Player of the game. Okay, okay, okay. Let's save. We got 10 minutes left. So our next, it's hard to see when the screen's like this. I think we got Penn, we got Purdue, Penn State, and Wisconsin. Next up. Purdue looks like they're ranked. I can't see the number. Okay, they're ranked three. They're 18 and 0. I like that. I'd rather them come in 18 and 0 than 17 and 1 because there's a chance to be the first one to beat them. That's an away game. It's going to be in two days. We're going to sim to it. The number th So who's one and two if Purdue's 18 and 0 and they're number three? Who's number one and two? I'm going to check the polls in a second. But they, they got us at a bad time because we're starting a little run. We're getting the horses going. We're going to take them out for a run. Purdue should have played us last week, really. JoJo Moore. Sometimes I randomly read the names I see. If you blink, the score that's on the screen when you blink it freezes in your mind and you can actually see the score. Like 81-73 Cincinnati just beat somebody. Okay. To the polls. Once again, to the polls. Texas 17 and 4, 4 and 3 in the conference and they're number 1. I don't see it. Sorry. They're number 1 in the net, sure, but I don't see it. Kentucky 15 and 5, Purdue 18 and 0. Let's look at their schedule. Um, well, they beat Temple. They won the Palmetto shootout. They beat Houston. That's a good win. And they beat Illinois. Yeah, not the strongest schedule, I guess, but... I got to click back on Michigan here. Not the strongest schedule, but I mean, they are 18-0. and 0. I'm sure Texas has a bad loss on their record if they've got four of them. You know, you lose four times and you're the number one team and there's a team ranked number three that's undefeated in a big conference. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll straighten things out here with a win. No, oh, 19-0. We gave it our best shot. We lost by 12 to an undefeated team. And we won the second half. We were down 18 at the half. I know what you're thinking. I have very fast math. I've always been good at math. Math has been a big part of my life. It's very important, and I recognize that at a young age. I use it everywhere. Give me, give me go. Put some math questions in the thing. Just addition not and subtraction. None of that fancy multiplication stuff. So. I'm kidding. I know it all. Uh, Penn State will visit in two days. And then Wisconsin, we go to Wisconsin and then we go to Nebraska. Right now, eight and ten, two and six in the Big Ten. We have seven minutes left in the stream. Tons of time. Tons of time. It's a good thing that I'm doing this because I'd rather find out that I was playing a crappy system this way than go into that CBGM and have a season like this. And everyone's thinking, man, what is this guy doing here? Why did we let him in? He sucks. I don't want to go there and suck. I just want to be blended into the furniture. And then uh, nobody even know I'm there. And then as I get better, I just come out of nowhere and I win. Penn State, this is going to be a tough game, but we got them at home. Trying to keep my, trying to keep an even keel here. They're 14 and 6. They're no pushovers. Okay, that's not a bad, bad loss. It's a bad season. It's a bad coach. 
I'm dejected. Yeah, I am. I had a little bit of hope there when I switched to a high post and we started winning big games. Winning games big, not big games. But we're back to uh, maybe it's the players, you know? Maybe it's the players. Not many players on this roster were players that I recruited. So I'm going to go with that. Maybe we can't play just the high post because it's too easy to prepare for if that's all we do. Hmm? 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 I'll do one more with this system. Play in Wisconsin. We're good, baby. We're going to keep playing the high post. Try and stop us. See if you can stop us. Like 12 of the 20 teams that we've played. See if you can do what they did. And they beat us in the second half too. I keep bringing up the second half because that's when we should be dominating. Because we're running these teams, right? How do I know that we're doing that though? That's my coaching philosophy, but how do I implement that? Does it just automatically happen? Like there's nowhere here that, why don't I go down to a 35 for no reason, just because I just thought of it. Okay, let's go. I should also look at recruits and see what system most of them play. Because if I'm seeing a lot of the top recruits all playing, you know, a, a one, two, two, maybe I should just play that. If that's the popular system, easier to find players that fit into the system. But when you're only playing a high post, you only have to practice a high post so they can learn it faster. They're not learning two or three different systems, you know? Or I can do what you're supposed to do and just look at the players you have at the beginning of every year and design your system towards that. Maybe we can try that. Nebraska Cornhuskers. I guess that's someone that just shucks the corn. There's a lot of names in college sports, uh, mascot names that I don't... Yeah, I'm going to switch everything up. Everything is getting changed. Everything. I'm going to... Starting now. I'm going to learn what these guys are good at, and we're going to do that. And that's it. These guys seem to be the best at the high post. I gotta be honest. And a one, two, two seems better than the two, three for defense. Oh no, sorry, this one. No, oh, no, I was right. Man to man. Okay, we're going to do the half court trap. We're going to keep the defense the way it is. We're going to do... Uh, 70-30. Now on the offensive side, I'm going to bring uh, the flex back. 10% five out, 60% high post, 30% flex. So now we got to practice all that. I feel like we're going back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, okay. And that's an hour. Do we have a game immediately coming up? Next game is Ohio State on the 6th, and it's, we're only in the 2nd. Yeah, we're going to end it here. But the next video is going to start off with a game against number 23, Ohio State. They're ranked 23rd. Do we have a scouting report on them yet? Yeah, we do. Ohio State comes in running a normal offense. The game prediction is narrowly predicting us. Uh, some outside uh, offensive freedom outside of their sets in the half court, they sport an outside attack with their primary set being the triangle. Ohio State, Ohio State presses on occasion in the half court. They, their primary defense is man to man. And for pressure defense, they go with a two, two, one. They run the triangle, huh? Overload one side of the floor and attempt to get the ball to a player in the post. It is a more traditional offense in the fact that big guys tend to stay around the basket with guards on the outside. I don't want my big guys around the basket because my big guys can shoot the three. Most likely, I mean, yeah, look at that. My three, well, I'm not playing Michael White, but he's a walk-on that can shoot the three. Walker Strong, they can shoot the three. Shannon can shoot the three. Haywood, not so much, but he's the only one on the team. And the centers. I mean, even their three point shooting isn't bad. That was terrible, guys. Nine and 12. I was complaining about a 17 and 15 record, but we're starting to experiment now. I'm not married to the high post and the five out. Um, we're trying different things. This is actually good. If you're here to learn, learn with me. Because I don't know anything, but I will. I guarantee you I will. I am going to work through this until we figure it out. And it's sandbox mode, so I'm not getting fired. I'm here for the long haul. I'm going to be a Hall of Fame coach at Michigan. I promise you that. I promise you that. We'll see you next time.